So there seems to be this debate about whether you should choose one tool and stick with it and use it for everything, or if you should use multiple tools. And I am firmly in the camp of using multiple tools and leveraging them where they are strong. Now, I've already spoken about how I've moved a lot of my project management workflows over to Tana, but I wanted to show the example of even writing an article and how I use not only one tool, but actually three tools, well, actually four, if you look at the video. And I wanted to break down how I go about this because I think it will help people just to structure their workflows or at least think about the different ways that you can use these different tools. Now, it must be said that Obsidian and LogSeq both have very robust plugin environments. So there are lots of plugins and you could probably force your hand and do all of this in one of those applications. And I'm not the biggest fan of plugins, but I do use one or two and you'll see one show up in this workflow. However, I'm really just a fan of making life as simple as possible. And for me, copy paste is really my best friend in this example. So I'm going to show you how I start with Tana, then move to LogSeq, and then finally do the final editing in Obsidian. Now for me, things typically start in Tana and they start with an idea. Now, the reason that I do this in Tana is because I find it very easy to structure and just capture information on the go. And I can use a Tana Capture mobile app for this. So if I am, you know, out and about and I have an idea, I can very easily just like start typing the idea or just send a voice note. And I, if I'm in the Tana application, I just say control E and then this is my idea that I want to write about, to write about. Okay. And I say control E and there we go. So that's nothing special there, but then what I can do is use my super tags and say ideas. And then I get all these fields that I can then start writing about. Now, this is helpful for me because it, it forces me to prompt my thinking and then think about who I'm writing for. And another one, another super tag that I've got here is breakdown. So hashtag breakdown. And that just introduces these different fields here. Audience, who are they and why should they care? The problem, agitation, and then a proposed solution. So that is really just the starting point of it all. So this is the article that I wrote this last week. And I just started with filling in all of these fields over here, just so that I have an idea of how I want to structure this. This was before I went and did an outline. I actually didn't even write an outline for this article, which is probably a shortfall on my side. It's often best just to start with an outline. But what I did is I started with all of these points over here, and then I did a transcript where I just went for a little walk with my phone and I recorded what I wanted to say. Now, you don't even need to use your phone anymore because as of last week, Tana now has this control shift E recording, which now is recording my voice. And if I go and uh, as my face is hidden behind here, and then if I stop voice capture over there, I then just go to my inbox, which is up here. And there we go. I've got this recording and I can transcribe it. So that is super easy to just get your thoughts out onto the page and just have a first draft ready. So then what I do is I take this and I copy it and paste it into LogSeq. So that's the next step of my process. So this is then my first draft and I did a whole bunch of things just to make sure I could find it again. And there's a reason that I haven't like updated all the properties there. It was so that I could do this video and show you the different stages and how it went through. So you can see here, I've got everything in outlines and yeah, it's a bit messy, but I then printed this out. So it was super messy, printed it out, and then I marked it up with red pen and just went through and yeah, did all the moving or like moving of different things in the same way that I would use an outliner for. And that's why I like LogSeq because using the outliner then enables me to like create a new block very quickly, drag and drop it, or use the shortcuts on the keyboard to move blocks around and very easily structure my thoughts and then also just collapse different parts that I've finished on and focus in on what I want to focus in. So that was step two. And the other reason that I like LogSeq is because I'm familiar with the one plugin, which is this print to PDF plugin. And if I just go here, I can say download page as PDF, and then I print with retain formatting. And that's how I got to this thing over here. Now, at this point, it became very much an an issue of rinse and repeat, where I would then go through my different notes over here and then record them into Tana. 
So at the bottom over here, I've, I've retained these transcriptions because I just wanted to show you, but I typically wouldn't do that sort of thing. I, I think historically I'd used to try and retain everything and that actually wasn't worthwhile. Like I, I would only keep one final version, like not worrying about the, you know, the different iterations. It's not important for me. It might be important for you, but it's not important for me. Okay, so at this point, it's going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards between LogSeq and Tana. Then when I finally get to a point, and it took quite a long time to get here, where I thought, okay, cool, this is good. What I wanted to do was move it to Obsidian. The reason that I want it in Obsidian is because it's much cleaner. I don't have the bullet points over there. Well, actually I do. I'll, I'll quickly get into that now. But it just feels like a cleaner interface for me. I know that LogSeq has got a lot of other things going on for me, like a lot of associations in a sense, but Obsidian isn't my main tool. So when I'm editing the final version of Obsidian, it's very easy for me just to focus and remain in Obsidian. And Obsidian is a WYSIWYG editor. So what you see is what you get. If I open this page in Obsidian, why you should meditate, and let's just collapse that over there. So I've collapsed the introduction. Going back to Obsidian, control A, why you should meditate and how to get started. You can see here that it's got this collapsed equals true properties. So Obsidian just uses pure vanilla markdown. Uh, LogSeq doesn't do that. And the other thing that you'll see in Obsidian is, and in LogSeq actually, is those bullet points. So the fourth tool actually was using VS Code. So if I go and I open this with default app, which in my case is VS Code, I've got this little regex over here, which looks for a dash and a space at the start of the line and then replaces it with a blank line. And this just ensures that the regex is on. And if I just do this here for this article here, uh, let's say enter, control alt enter. Yes. I'm going to go back to, okay. I, I, everything should be unindented first in order to make this work. But if I go back to LogSeq now, you'll see that it, it's made those changes over there. So that's really all that there is to it. I then took it from Obsidian and I moved it into Substack and I published it. I quickly wanted to recap what the benefits are that I got from each of these tools. Just if this is the one minute you watch the video, here it is. So quick capture of ideas from mobile and also actually from desktop. The initial structuring is super important from Tana and then transcription through the integration with OpenAI Whisper API. Okay, let's get over perfectionism here. Then LogSeq, for me, the flexibility and familiarity of editing an outliner is really useful. I also am able to get it to that markdown file. And then just I'm familiar with the one plugin, which is the print to PDF, which is a super useful plugin. Then with Obsidian, it's a WYSIWYG editor. There's no collapsed properties, no funny spaces, and it just feels cleaner for me. So that's the process. And this is the final article, and I'll add a link to the article. And just to speak a little bit more on a personal note, the reason that I wrote this article and the reason that I'm clean shaven is because it's Movember, and Movember is about raising awareness for men's health. So specifically looking at prostate issues and also mental health, specifically suicide prevention. So I'm raising funds for Movember. I've got a page that you can donate to. It's for a local charity in South Africa, which is the Men's Foundation of South Africa. I'll add a link to the Twitter link, which just uh, introduces why I'm doing it and, and how you can donate. And then also I'm going to be donating 10% of all course sales made in November to another personal project, which is close to me. So if you want to support indirectly, you can also purchase a course in November. If you are interested in LogSeq and Tana, as I am, I've also got a bundle now available where you can buy Unlock Tana and LogSeq Mastery for a discounted price. So thank you so much for watching. All the links are below and I'll hopefully see you around in the next video very soon.